Hello, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and in this section we're going to explore using the TI-89 calculator to do logarithms and square roots. Uh, you know, we'll have a few little sections here on some of the more basic functions, this being one of them, and then we'll go on into some of the more complicated algebraic and calculus functions and such as we get on down the, down the line. But for now, let's talk about uh, logs and square roots because you'll be using those a lot when you use the calculator. Um, easiest thing first, the square root button is right here in blue on the calculator and so to use that is exactly how you might expect. Put a square root right here, blue, second function, and if you want to take the square root of 4, put a 4 in there. If you forget to close the parentheses, the calculator will tell you that you're missing a parentheses. Go ahead and hit escape to back out of that and just add your parentheses. And the square root of 2 is, I'm sorry, the square root of 4 is 2, just like you might expect. Uh, just one more example, square root of 16, just like you might expect, is going to be 4. So it functions just like you might expect. You have to hit the square root first, hit the number, close the parentheses, uh, and there you go. And so it's, it's right near the um, exponent uh, command there because, you know, exponentiation and uh, root are kind of opposites of one another. So they're both in the same side of the calculator. So you'll use square roots a lot. Now, uh, what if you wanted to take a cube root? Well, there's more than one way to do that. First, before we even get there, there's another way to take square root if you want. Remember that a square root is the same thing as raising something to the one-half power. So if we take 4 and raise it, and just to make it clear, let me do a parentheses, one-half power, just like that, 4 raised to the one-half power, we should get exactly what we got up here, and we do. 4 raised to the one-half gives us 2. Uh, 16 raised to the one-half, one divided by two, uh, is going to give you four. So I'm just showing you that there's more than one way to do things on this calculator. You can go ahead and hit the square root button, get the, the answer, it'll be a little bit more clear what you're trying to do, but you can always raise things to whatever power you want. If you want a square root, it's to the one-half power, a cube root is one-third, fourth root is one-fourth, and so on. So if you wanted to, to take the, uh, the third root of something, then you could say 8 and raise it to the power of 1 third. And that would be taking the cube root of something, so or the cube root of 8 in this case. So if you hit enter, you'll get 2. The reason that you get 2 is because if you're taking a cube root, then 2 times 2 times 2, so doing it 3 times, 2 times 2 times 2 does give you 8, and that's the right answer. So you can use this power button to take roots of whatever number you want, it's okay, but the calculator also does give you a function for that. If we go into the math menu, so second function and then math, on the number menu here, do the fly out, and then if we scroll down, number, looks like it's going to be number, or letter D, so the very last one, root. So if we hit enter, if we just put 4 in here and close it off, it's going to assume that you're trying to take a square root. And so you'll get, uh, well, actually, in this case, it's not going to assume. This function doesn't assume that. You need to specify. If you want to take a square root, you need to put the number that you're trying to take, hit a comma, and then hit a 2, telling it that you're trying to take a square root. So square root of 4 is... Two. Notice that in this case, instead of just a square root, it puts the number out here just like you might expect. So if it's a square root, it's going to put a 2 up here uh, if you're trying to take a cube root and so on. So just to show that off, let's go here and change this 4 to an 8. And it, let's go ahead and change the 2 to a 3. So when we do the root command, we're taking the cube root of 8. 8 is what we're taking the root of. The second number is you know, what root is it? It's fourth root, fifth root, sixth root, or whatever. We hit enter, we're going to get two. It's exactly the same thing that we got up here when we raise it to the one third power because they're doing exactly the same thing. Using this root function is a lot of times more convenient if you forget about the whole power thing and also if you're programming the calculator to have a built in function to do it. But if you you know, you may be on a test and you may not remember what menu this is. This command is in, so always don't forget that you can raise something to a fractional power and get basically the same result. Uh, just one more example. If we wanted to do uh, 64, let's go ahead and take the fourth root of that. 64, we're going to take the fourth root of that. And in this case, it's not a pure 
a pure guy. So when we do this, if you did a factor tree and take 64 and start breaking out the factors and start grouping in terms of four um, copies of everything, then you'll find out that the answer is 2 times the square root of 2. If we change it from a fourth root, uh, it's kind of fun to play around with, to a cube root and do the answer, then we're going to get a pure number back which is the number 4 because 4 times 4 times 4 does give us 64 if you do that math out four, you know, 4 times 4 times 4 does give you 64 so it is a cube root of this guy so just to illustrate the point one more time you're taking a cube root of 64 uh, using the root command but you can always just take 64 and raise it to a fractional power let's do 1 third just to prove that it's correct and we're going to get the same number back. So the moral of the story is, as far as square roots or roots in general, is that on the buttons of the calculator you have a built-in uh, second function button here for a square root. That's what you're going to use most of the time. If you're trying to take a cube root or a fourth root or a fifth root or a tenth root or whatever, you can always raise it to a fractional power or you can go into the math menu, into the number menu, and go over to the root command and uh, specify what route you're trying to take and get basically exactly the same thing. So it just depends on what you remember and either way is just fine. Now as far as logarithms, the only log button on the calculator is the natural log button here which is the second function and that's a base E and you're gonna find, it may seem a little funny to you, especially if you're just in algebra, why there wouldn't be a, a base 10 logarithm on here, but when you get higher up in math, you'll find that base 10 logarithm really isn't used that much. Most of the time in nature, base E is really what just tends to pop up, and that's just kind of a fascinating thing, but it's true. So on this calculator, they chose to not put a base 10 logarithm on here, an L-O-G log button, they gave you a natural log. So if you go and hit second function natural log, okay and then put um, you know natural log of uh, 4 let's say close the parentheses and when you hit this guy it's going to simplify it uh, based on the rules of, of algebra because you can write 4 as 2 squared and so anytime you have something squared inside of a logarithm you can sort of take the the exponent out and that's why it's it's simplified in this way but if you want to get the actual decimal just hit the green button and the squiggly equal sign and it'll convert that to a decimal for you which is what you would get in a regular calculator the algebra capabilities of the TI-89 are just amazing and that's why it can do the simplification for you uh, something you may not even realize but it does it basically behind the scenes for you instantaneously um, to give you a, a, a little bit more of a, something concrete if you take the natural log and if you stick the um, the letter E inside and there's a couple of ways to do this the easiest way to do this is just to go ahead and hit the green button and drop E to the X in there and just make it to the one power so all we've done here is this is just sort of a cheap way to put the, the number E um, inside of here just raising it to the one power when we hit enter here the natural log of E should give us one which it does because it's base E so E raised to the one power does does give you E that's exactly what you expect now notice that right above or right next to the natural log is is that power of, uh, of E button so just to give you a better example what if you did the natural log of 8 close the parentheses hit enter it's going to convert it it's going to simplify it for you I should say let's don't get the decimal let's just sort of leave it like this let's take my last answer um, which I'm going to do by green and then I'm sorry blue and then this guy here last answer and I'm going to raise that to the power of E. So actually the best way to do that is going to hit this first. E raised to the power of my last answer. So blue and then here last answer. Close the parentheses out. So here I've taken natural log of 8. I got an answer. Now I take E and raise it to the power of that last answer. And I'll get 8 back because these are inverses of one another. So if I take the log of a number and get an answer, and then I turn around and take that answer and raise it to the power of E, or E raised to the power of whatever that answer is, then I should get the number back that I started with because these are basically completely in inverses of one another. So that's why these two buttons are on this, these two functions are on the same button because they are inverses of one another. Okay, so most of the time you're going to use the natural log button. You're going to use the E raised to the power of X button quite a bit. Uh, there's one more thing I do want to show you and that is the log function, the L-O-G log function. Um, it's not on the calculator 
it's not even in the math menu if you dig around you won't even find it in the math menu the only place that it exists is in the catalog so that's why I say some functions if you can't find them anywhere else look in the catalog so here's alphabetical listing I'm going to go down to the L so I'm going to just hit number four because I'm already in alpha mode here in the catalog menu and that's gonna bring me to L and I'm going to just continue going down the line here until I find the function LOG there's natural log right up there and here's log so I'm going to go ahead and hit log like that and I'm going to type a number in there this is going to default to being base 10 so if I do log of 10 and close it off I'm going to get an answer of 1 because if it's base 10 10 raised to the power of 1 does give me 10 now if I go in and put a different number in here it's going to function exactly my, as, as you might think it's going to calculate the log base 10 of the number 5 you're going to get a decimal out of it the calculator is going to decide well that's not a very exact answer I don't want to truncate it so I'm going to just leave it in this form I can hit the green button hit the squiggly equal sign to convert that to a decimal which most of the time is what you're going to want to see now this calculator does have the capability to take logarithms to any base you want so if you want base e just use the built-in function up here if you want base 10 just use the, the log function here in the catalog menu like I said right here um, which is what we just did a second ago but if you want a log to a different base for instance let's say you wanted to take um, log of the number 4 of the base 2 so it's base 2 of the number 4. You hit enter and it's, you see it's going to be nice about it because it's going to write it in a nice form just like you would write in your paper. Log base 2 of the number 4 is equal to 2 because 2 raised to the 2 power is 4. So you see it's, it's a nice thing here. So if we put something like, um, let's put uh, 128 in here. So we'll take log 128 base 2 hit enter and we're going to get the number seven why is that the number seven because two raised to the power of seven gives us 128 two raised to the power of seven does indeed give you 128 and that is the definition of a logarithm so the calculator is very powerful you've got the natural log button right here base e if you just drop enough a number into the log function like up here it's going to assume that you mean base 10 but if you actually go and put a comma up here like this and, and put a different base down. We can put any base here we want. We can put base, you know, 51. Hit enter. We're going to get a crazy answer, but we can convert that to a decimal and we'll get a decimal answer out of it. So you can do logarithms to any base. That about wraps it up for this section. Uh, watch it a couple times. Learn how to use logarithms and square roots and cube roots efficiently in your calculator, and you'll be well on your way to mastering the TI 89.